This is lesson 78 in the basic JavaScript section of Free Code Count. This lesson will be counting cards. In the casino game Blackjack, a player can gain an advantage over the house by keeping track of the relative number of high and low cards remaining in the deck. This is called card counting. Having more high cards remaining in the deck favors the player. Each card is assigned a value according to the table below. When the count is positive, the player should bet high. When the count is zero or negative, the player should bet low. You will write a card counting function. It will receive a card parameter and increment or decrement the global count variable according to the card's value. So let's see table. And we see here if the card is a two, three, four, five, or six, we increment count by one. If it's seven, eight, or nine, we don't do anything to count. And if it's 10J, Q, King, or Ace, we decrement count by 1. So it says the function will then return a string with the current count and the string bet if the count is positive or hold if the count is 0 or negative. The current count and the player's decision, bet or hold, should be separated by a single space. And this is the example output. First we do what the current count is and then either bet or hold depending if it's zero or negative we say hold if it's positive it's bet hint do not reset count to zero when value seven when value is seven eight or nine so down here shows us that card sequence two three four five and six should return five bet card sequence seven eight nine should return zero hold card sequence 10 J Q King A should return negative 5 hold and so forth. So when we come over here, we could use either if else if statement, or we can make this easier and use a switch statement. So I'm going to go ahead and use a switch statement, and it's going to happen inside our function. We have our global variable count that's at zero. So then when the function is called each of these times it should change what count is according to what is passed in so where's our table our tables there so like it says there we're incrementing by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We could, uh, when making our switch statement, just do switch. And it's going to take in card. And we want it to do this. If it's two, three, four, five, or six, so for case two, for case three, for case four, case five, and case six. I kind of forgot my. <clears throat> now you could do it this way count plus equals one which is the same as saying count is assigned count plus one it's the same same thing just shorter version we could just make it shorter and say count plus equals one and then break and we could technically copy this and just add it to each one and we could add it all the way to K6, but even easier than that, you could actually just since e, case 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 is all doing the same thing, we could just add it to K6 and that will work exactly the same. So that's for 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So for case 7, for case 8, and for case 
9 also do all the same thing, which is just, well, it doesn't increment by anything. It stays at 0. So, I mean, I don't have to do it this way. This will be for clarity plus equals 0. It's not doing anything to count. And then we have if case is 10, forgot my break, so it's trying to tell me here. So then we have case 10, we have case J, case Q, case King, and last case Ace. And all these will decrement count by 1. So minus equals 1. And again, remember, all this is doing is it's doing count, assigning to count, count minus 1. So originally in our goal, global variable, count starts at 0. And it starts changing depending on first two's passed in first we have two passed in when it's called down here and when it's passed in here it case two is run and of course it will run until it hits a break so it will increment count by one break then next time we run count card counter and threes passed in there threes passed in it also increments by one so now uh, our card variable should be two because a twos passed in a threes passed in so that's first incremented by one so zero plus one is one then three would make it two when seven is passed in it should not do anything to count so count remains two when k is passed in it decrements by one so 2 minus 1 would become 1, and then when A is passed in, it also decrements by 1. So we're back at um, our count being 0. So we wanted to return whatever count is, so we return count, but they also want either bet or hold separated or count then separated with either bet or hold. So we haven't learned about um, the ternary operator, which is just easier than uh, having to write more code. So this is how it works. We have count that's going to be printed out. Well, it's going to this is going to print out zero, and then we're also adding to that either bet or hold and this is how the ternary operator works we give it a condition and we say as long as count is greater than zero so it's either going to print one or an one or another first we want it to either do bet if it is true and if it's false we want it to print hold so how this works is, is it looks at this condition we put in here and depending if it's true or false it will print one or the other so now when this is run we already did the math in our head two three seven k and ace will make count zero at the end so it's going to return zero plus either bet or hold depending if count is greater than zero since it's zero it's not greater so this is false since it's false it will print the second choice hold so this will return zero space hold make sure this space is here and that should be it for this lesson it should work just fine and that should be it for this lesson